Okay, this is an update on the French door project. And um, where I last left off, I had just added the um, spray foam. And so I have trimmed off the spray foam and it was not very difficult at all. It did not stick on the front surfaces, even though in many cases it expanded. Where it did stick was on the side surface. So I did have to scrape it in those cases. That wall board is going to go up against that, so that's really not critical, and then trim will go over it. Um, the next step after that was the attachment of the sill clip. Um, sill clip, period, uh, plural. Now, my kit came with two sill clips. It only shows adding one sill clip in the middle for a double panel. But since I had two, I went ahead and added two sew clips. It only made sense. Otherwise, I wouldn't have anything to do with the other one. Now, the screws that came with the sew clip, I, I was not completely happy because they're not flush with the clip. They actually stick up higher. It doesn't seem as though they should have to be that way. The clip really should have had a bevel edge because the flooring has to go on top of this. Now, this floor had five sixteenths Luan um, and I didn't remove the Luan before installing the door because I didn't think it would actually interfere with the door and it didn't with the exception of the location of the sill clip so I did have to cut out that Luan just to get the sill clip in that's not a big deal it's, it's very easy to cut I might end up taking all of this out when I put the final floor in I don't know for now Exactly, it's going to depend on which floor goes in. So after putting in the sill clips, the, uh, what we decided to do was to paint the doors, okay, because we did have some warm temperatures where we could paint the doors. We used, in this case, two coats of latex primer and one coat of semi-gloss paint, which is latex. It was advertised as being good for cabinetry and doors. We took the doors off the hinges according to the procedure that we saw on the Anderson website. They came off rather easily. We put them horizontal on some soft horses and painted them. I did have one problem with painting them and that was these came with so-called removable wooden grills. The interior wood was pine. The grills were maple because it's a hardwood, so they wouldn't break so easily. But the problem with these is, no matter how hard I tried, I could not remove them. I called the Anderson helpline. They couldn't give me any help. Um, the mechanism by which you're supposed to get them off is really simply by pulling them. And a lot of people who have these types of grills on their windows will know how to get them off. But these ones would not come off. And um, I didn't want to break them. And I, I, I tried every spot on every of the two doors and I couldn't even get it loose on a single spot. So I said, there's no way that that was gonna work. The um, hardware, they were ordered as being removable and the hardware that they came with was the so-called removable hardware. That's what that little clip is. That little metal clip fits into a recess in the back side of it. And you're supposed to be able to, it's got a spring tension on it. So what we decided to do was, we're never gonna take those off. And we ended up painting them in place, and that did lead to a certain problem. Rather than put masking tape here, which would be one way of painting these, uh, what we did was, because the, there's a space between these and the doors, I, we actually, in this door, for example, placed some wax paper around, and then painted it and took off the wax paper. The only problem is, there were a few spots where the wax paper got stuck underneath. And you can kind of see that there's a little piece of wax paper at certain locations. So it did have a negative effect on the appearance from the outside. It's probably not gonna be a big deal because uh, probably we'll actually be able to remove those just by sliding a, a knife under it. Because we did have success with that. And we just didn't go ultimately all the way to get all of it off because we wanted to move on to other things. But that's something that can still be done. Those little pieces can be removed. Uh, on the 
one side we did wax paper. On the other side, which is the side that I was responsible for, I used inserts from the newspaper flyer, and mine was worse because this was paper that was colored, it wasn't neutrally white like the wax paper, and also it was paper that was thinner and would absorb the paint. And as a result, it got more stuck on the other side, and I had to run a putty knife between underneath to push that out. And I can still probably push that out from the other side, but it will be very tedious. So I was not happy with the removable grills. They were not removable. I, I honestly couldn't tell you exactly why. I uh, couldn't find anything on the net about what, if this is a common problem or not. I'm not sure. Okay, the next step um, that would be ready to do would actually be exterior trim. Exterior trim pieces across the top and the side. I was planning on using, um, I did not order the Fibrex Anderson trim. I was planning on using cedar three and a half inch trim because I used that same trim on all of the other doors and windows in the house on the exterior. I have not put that up yet. Uh, so in the meantime, I've started insulating the cavities, the remaining cavities. I got a roll of the R13 16 inch for a this bay. Now, I didn't have the freedom of having this bay to be exactly 16 inches, okay? Just because I selected the location of the door based on aesthetics, not based on being able to put a 16 inch bat here. It turns out that the cavity was off by about an inch and a half. So what I did was I cut off just the fiberglass on the other side for an inch and a half, and then overlapped it and stapled it in here. I did that while I was doing that, for example, you, there's a spot where I made a little slit in it. That seemed to work fine. Then on the other side, I had this somewhat irregular, two, just two and a half inch gap. So I took that one and a half inch fiberglass that was left over from the other side, folded it in half, and filled it up. I still have half to go. I did caulk this piece on the top, which is the piece that I had placed in as a nailer to have a piece to nail the outside sheathing to because I did not cut back the outside sheathing uh, halfway through the uh, top plate of the original window opening. Just, I did that as a shortcut. I probably should have done it, but I didn't want to get up on a ladder with the circular saw to cut off that. So I cut it off flush with the opening, then I didn't have a nailer. So anyway, I put this nailer in, but realizing that that nailer is a seam that goes all the way through to the outside, it's not covered, no overlap by sheathing, I decided just to caulk that up. I also added caulk down on the baseboards. Uh, the plate, the bottom plate, in this house, uh, the bottom plate on the subfloor does not have any type of sealant, no um, sealer or caulk was placed, and you can see in a certain area there how bad that can actually be. Um, in other areas in rooms when I take off the baseboards, I can literally see daylight between the bottom plate and the floor because there's, there's nothing in there to seal it. There's no gasket. And the bottom plate is not going to be flat against the subfloor over a very long period interval. So whenever I have these off, I caulk that space, okay, just so I don't have wind blowing through it. And I will do the same over there. Now, one thing that I should say, this extremely ugly looking cavity, the reason why this ugly looking cavity is here, and I have mentioned this before, but I'll mention it again. Um, I haven't sealed this up. The next One of the next steps will be to place wallboard over this. But before sealing this up, I have to point this out. This is a four inch um, drain waste vent stack made of the plastic PVC. It covers almost the entirely the cavity because the cavity that is in there is about a four inch cavity. So it's right up against the sheathing on one side and it's right up against the wallboard on the other side. And this might be quite, must be quite common. At one point earlier, I had actually screwed something into the wall at this location, not knowing where that stack was. The screw went right into the stack. And it did though in such a way that over a period of many years, 
seepage of water saturated this entire wall board, starting up from a certain height and then just spreading out in both directions. And I did, after a period of time, notice how it, there was a problem. And I removed that device that I had uh, screwed in. It was actually a dog food storage bin, okay? Did not work out to be a good idea. Now, at the time, there was baseboard heater here. I, I couldn't remove the wall board behind the heater without taking the heater out, which I did not do. So I cut it off at the top, put new wall board in. Now, in this case, that I had the occasion to take the baseboard heater out, I was able to remove the damaged or rotted, no longer wet, but still decomposed wall board that was in this category. I will be able to essentially clean this out, caulk it up, put new wall board on. I'll take the opportunity of doing a better job of insulating around this drain vent stack. And then I'm going to mark this at a certain location so I can avoid drilling into it. Okay, and I, ha I can do that while this is still open. Anyway, that's just a little detail. Um, that's just an update on the project and uh,